Welcome to this lecture, Chandra A Stellar Life, a part of the summer online lectures organized by the Nehru Planetarium, Nehru Memorial Museum and Library. And uh, we welcome you to this uh, lecture, Chandra A Stellar Life. A look at the inspiring life story of Nobel laureate Subramaniam Chandrasekhar, interwoven with a little understanding of Life stories of stars, low mass, intermediate mass, high mass stars, the issues involved in this uh, evolution of stars and uh, a little rationalization of the very well known work of uh, Subramanian Chandrasekhar which was the basis for his uh, Nobel Prize, the Chandrasekhar limit. What exactly is that limit? We will be talking about these issues in this lecture. Every once in a while, in the history of our world, uh, there have been inspired geniuses who have had an ability to be moved by various aspects of the world around us, to express them in a way that others could not express, to get something out of them which others could not get and distill all of that and give it to the world. Shakespeare through these uh, lines which are perhaps considered the most beautiful in English literature reminds us again and again that the floor of heaven is indeed thick inlaid with patines of bright gold and there is not the smallest of these um, stars in, out there which in its motion, in its life does sing like an angel with so much of harmony which in some way perhaps the grossness of our daily lives makes us overlook or perhaps not quite overlook when we feel inspired by looking at, when we are allowed to look at the inspiring night skies or perhaps uh, look at them deeply through sophisticated instruments or be inspired and understand them or at least uh, a little understanding of the kind of uh, work that went into um, a physical and a mathematical understanding of these stars, which was the kind of work which inspired Subramaniam Chandrasekhar from a very early age when he used to frequent the library of the Presidency College Madras where he was studying as an undergraduate student and where he would uh, keep up to date with the very uh, exciting breakthroughs in physics and astrophysics which are happening at that time meet some of those frontier physicists who had come to Madras just at that time and in fact be inspired and um, inspired and following up that inspiration with sufficient competence to have had done some amount of work in new areas which led to his obtaining a scholarship to study in uh, England. And even as he set sail to England, he did some work in understanding of stars, the end states of stars, which uh, had very far-reaching implications. How many 19-year-olds really setting sail for higher studies would have spent two weeks of a sea voyage in working steadily over very tricky problems involving rigorous mathematical calculations. And work done at this time, which would open up a whole new field of relativistic astrophysics. And work done at this age which would lead towards a recognition half a century later through a Nobel Prize. His childhood inspiration seems to have been mathematician Srinivas Ramanujan, childhood and lifelong inspiration about whom he said it is hopeless to try to emulate him but he was there even as the Everest is there and he found an expression to this inspiration by working hard to find the one surviving photograph of Srinivas Ramanujan and from that trying to obtain it actually uh, 
commissioning and obtaining several busts of Srinivas Ramanujan, one of which he presented to the Royal Astronomical Society. And work which he had done at the age of 19 years and following through uh, over the next few years, well led half a century later to a Nobel Prize, work he did continuously following this, this phase led to many many recognitions all through his life. But recognition never interfered with his basic nobility, neither did these recognitions ever interfere with the intensity of enjoyment that he always had to study the behavior of celestial objects, to understand and undertake and complete a work with truth, beauty and elegance. He could see with an inner enjoyment patterns and connections between different human endeavors. The works of Shakespeare, the art of Monet, the music of Beethoven, the scientific endeavors of Newton and distill all of that enjoyment into an understanding of the heavens.